Did Epstein really kill himself? Well, this is one of the few questions that science can't answer. When it comes to his multi-million dollar fortune, it is as mysterious as the circumstances surrounding his death. How did a person with working class upbringing rise to become one of the wealthiest people in America? We have delved deep into his life and have come up with some theories. But what are those theories? Well, to find out the answer, stick around with us until the end of the video. Before telling about his wealth sources, let us briefly review his early childhood and family background so we can get an idea of how ordinary life he had with no strong contacts. Jeffrey Epstein grew up in Coney Island, a suburban haven with a predominantly Jewish community. His family had super humble roots as his mother was both a working woman as well as a homemaker. This shows how he was certainly not born with a silver spoon in his mouth. And that's what makes this journey on his way to wealth more intriguing. Since his very childhood, he's been brilliant at math and probably this was his being good at numbers that helped him multiply his bank balance later in life. It was in the mid 70s that he found a job at a prestigious school where he taught calculus and physics. That was probably his first encounter with the elites, but soon he was fired from his first job because of poor performance. It seemed like he did make some important contacts here. One of his students included the son of Bear Stearns chairman, Alan Greenberg. So it's not that surprising that after getting fired from his first job, he was hired by Bear, which is an investment firm, as a floor trader's assistant. It was just a matter of four years that he rose to the position of a partner, but his success at Bear was really short-lived. In 1981, he lost his job because it rose to the surface that he had breached some security violations. After he departed, Epstein met Stephen Hoffenberg, the then president of Tower Financial Corporation, a debt collection agency that was later exposed to be a Ponzi scheme. Hoffenberg admitted in a Netflix documentary, Jeffrey Epstein, Filthy Rich, that he deeply regrets shaking hands with Jeffrey. He was aware how Jeffrey had been involved in fraudulent activities in his previous jobs, but Jeffrey's tricks smote him at that time because his company was running a Ponzi scheme at that time, a form of fraud where a company's value is being exaggerated by using fake bank papers to lure investors into investing in the company. Now, there are speculations that Jeffrey amassed this much wealth through some Ponzi scheme. But what are the basis for these claims? Hear me out. In 1982, Jeffrey set up the J. Epstein & Co. money management business, which aimed to help its clients recover stolen money from dubious lawyers and scammers. Sounds kind of ironic, doesn't it? The New York Post described his business strategy in 2002. He would take total control of the billion dollars, charge a flat fee, and assume power of attorney to do whatever he thought was necessary to advance his client's financial cause and he remained true to the $1 billion entry fee. According to people who know him, if you were worth $700 million and felt the need for the service of Epstein & Co., you would receive a not-so-polite no thank you from Epstein. Where does the Ponzi scheme fit here? Well, in 2009, Business Insider pointed out several red flags in his financial service provided to the clients. It was shady how all his clients were secretive, the administrative nature of all his employees, his total control of the client's money, and most importantly, the benchmark of $1 billion. This all indicated a Ponzi scheme, but there's no substantial evidence. However, it is proven how he and Hoffenberg made millions out of the Ponzi scheme of the towers, for which Hoffenberg was convicted of fraud later on and jailed for 20 years. Another highest peak of his career was his alliance with Les Wexner, CEO of L Brands, a huge name in the beauty market that owns Victoria's Secret and Bath & Body Works. Here, Epstein played all of his cards right, as he was given the absolute power of attorney over Les's financial affairs, and many of his friends speculated that Les was the real source behind Epstein's riches. However, this partnership did not end at reasonable terms, and Les dismissed Jeffrey in 2007. Les accused Jeff of stealing at least $46 million worth of funds from the retail tycoon. One of Jeffrey's victims, Virginia Roberts Guffrey, claims that Jeffrey debriefed her after she was forced into a sexual encounter with his wealthy friends so that he could have intimate and potentially embarrassing information about them. This way, there are theories in that he exploited girls to elicit details about his elite circle and then blackmailed them for money. Or he might blackmail them into investing money with him in his Ponzi schemes and then dump the money in offshore accounts to evade taxes. But again, there's no evidence to back these speculations. Click on one of the four videos on your screen right now. We'll catch you guys in the next one.